Shabbat Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon and wanted to take a few minutes of your time here on this Sabbath evening. Of course, it's already the Sabbath in Israel and uh, I don't know how far you guys are away from in America, but you should be getting close by now uh, to the Sabbath. And uh, especially with talking about the temple in the last message that we did, um, written proof about the Vatican going to build that. Um, and I know there's been several people that have asked me too about more information, how they can actually see this. And I know in the book that I have, uh, Morals and Dogma, I did not know that this is actually a book you can buy. Uh, but I see that there are used copies that can be purchased online, uh, as well as there was a website that I had found that actually has uh, this book as well. Now, I did notice when I saw the book online, the inside cover is different than the cover that I have. In mine, it says that if you don't return the book, you would be killed. Uh, it had to be, it could be borrowed, but only on, uh, under the penalty of death um, if it's not returned. And the one that I see in the other ones, it's a little different there. So, but, but anyway, um, again, just for those of you that want to see there, that is Morals and Dogmas. And um, there is no ISBN number in the book that I have here. Uh, it was page, uh, oh gosh, I forget what it was. Anyway, 861, I think it was, is where I read that from. But you can easily, uh, like I said, uh, from what I hear, you can actually purchase some of those online where people have found them before and they have sold them. Anyway, let's get, let's get right into this little message here I want to share with you about uh, the temple. What really is the temple? And as we know that God wants a temple that is not made by hands, but a body as he desired, as we've heard the scripture before. But I want to share with you something here from Genesis and Bereshit, uh, the book of Genesis. And I guess I'll take you to about the 28th verse. It says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay, this is when God first created Adam and Eve. Uh, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree on which is fruit yielding seed, uh, to you it shall be for food, and to every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and every creeping everything that creeps on the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so, and God saw that everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Now, I brought this up because of the temple. Now, it may sound kind of odd. Why would, well, Steve, why would you bring this up as part of the temple? Well, the reason I say this is because of an interesting scripture over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66. Because you have to understand we are the temple of God. And clearly, if he's going to live inside of us, our temple must be clean. It's very important to God. But I wanted to share this scripture with you as well. This, I said, is in Isaiah 66. And uh, beginning with verse 1, God says here, they, Thus says the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? See? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things has my hand made, and so all those things came to be, says the Lord. But to this man will I look, to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. You see, he's looking for what? He's looking for someone that is of a contrite spirit, poor and a contrite spirit, and that trembles at his word. A humble person. He wants us to be that temple where he resides. He wants your heart to be the place where he lays his head and rest. I would love nothing more than to embrace the Almighty. Anyway, he goes on to say here, and this is what really caught my attention. He that kills an ox is like one who slays a man. Now, it's kind of interesting because God did set up the temple sacrifices. 
But he says here, he that slays an ox is as one who slays a man. Certainly brings new light on the Ten Commandments where he says, thou shalt not kill. Because God puts it, the killing of an ox, on the same level as a man. Now that is when he's looking at you to be his temple. That sacrifices a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. That offers a meal offering like one who offers pig's blood. That burns incense like one who blesses an idol. For they have chosen their own ways and their souls delight in their abomination. I also choose torments for them and will bring their fears upon them. Some very strong words the Lord uses here. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. You know, it's kind of interesting because if you think about it, in the beginning, or not in the beginning, but when God brought the children of Israel out, he fed them manna from heaven. He was actually taking the children of Israel back to the beginning, just like it was with Adam and Eve. Now, of course, they were eating manna. It was angels' food that was rained out of heaven for them. You know, it wasn't until the children of Israel began to complain and they wanted flesh that God give them the flesh. Anyway, just some thoughts that I thought would be interesting for you. I wanted to share that with you and pray about it. it. But it is beautiful. Of course, by the way, this is also in Isaiah 66. This is the redemption of Israel. This is when God makes Israel a nation. Many people believe that it's also where it speaks about, uh, or shall a nation be born in, in one moment? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Or shall I cause to bring forth and thereupon and shut the womb, says thy God? A lot of people think that was in 1948. I believe that's a time coming. I believe that this actually is prophetic. And it's looking at when the two witnesses come and preach the gospel. As I shared with you recently, Matthew 24, when Yeshua says, when this gospel is preached unto all nations, then the end will come. I think the two witnesses are going to be bringing us back to the way it was at the beginning. I think they're going to bring back Israel, not to sacrifices at the temple. I don't believe that they'll have any part of sacrificing at the temple whatsoever, although the temple will be built and there will be sacrifices offered there. Why? It's clear from what I've seen thus far, it seems to be that the Temple Institute will work with whoever is willing to help them build the third temple. And they, have already, they already know that the Vatican has offered to finance the building of the third temple. That's kind of interesting, especially in light of what I shared with you the other day. But the two witnesses, they won't have any part of that because they know, as Isaiah said here, if you kill an ox, it's as if you killed a man. I think they're going to bring us back to the way God intended his word to be kept in the beginning. That's a true restoration. To recognize Yeshua, he was that sacrifice for the sins of man. What greater sacrifice do we need? So, it's hard to say what things will be, but I hope that's a blessing for you this Shabbat evening. Shabbat Shalom, I'm Stephen Benun with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Shalom.